Edward John Smith, R.D., RNR was an English naval reserve officer who served as commanding officer of numerous White Star Line vessels. He is best known as the captain of the maiden voyage of the RMSA Titanic, which struck an iceberg and sank on April 15, 1912. Smith and over 1,500 others perished in the sinking. There is a statue of him in Beacon Park, Lichfield, England. Early life Edward John Smith was born on January 27, 1850 on Well Street, Hanley, Staffordshire, England to Edward Smith, a potter, and Catherine Hancock, born Marsh, who married on August 2, 1841 in Shelton, Staffordshire. His parents later owned a shop. Smith attended the Etruria British School until the age of 13, when he left and operated a steamed hammer at the Etruria Forge. In 1867, Aged 17 he went to Liverpool in the footsteps of his half-brother Joseph Hancock, a captain on a sailing ship. He began his apprenticeship on Senator Weber, owned by A. Gibson and Company of Liverpool. Marriage and Children On January 13, 1887, Smith married Sarah Eleanor Pennington at St. Oswald's Church, Winnick, Cheshire. Their daughter, Helen Melville Smith, was born in Waterloo, Liverpool on April 2, 1898. The family lived in an imposing red brick, twin gabled house, named Woodhead, on Wynne Road, Highfield, Southampton. Career Early commands Edward Smith joined the White Star Line in March 1880 as the fourth officer of Sar Celtic. He served aboard the company's liners to Australia and to New York City, where he quickly rose in status. In 1887, he received his first White Star Command, the Republic. In 1888, Smith earned his extra master's certificate and joined the Royal Naval Reserve, qualifying as a full lieutenant. This meant that in a time of war, he could be called upon to serve in the Royal Navy. Later, as he was a commander in the Royal Naval Reserve, Smith's ship had the distinction of being able to fly the blue ensign of the RMR. British merchant vessels generally flew the red ensign. Bigger commands, Smith was Majestic's captain for nine years commencing in 1895. When the Boer War started in 1899, Majestic was called upon to transport troops to Cape Colony. Smith made two trips to South Africa, both without incident, and for his service, King Edward VII awarded him the Transport Medal, showing the South Africa clasp, in 1903. Smith was regarded as a safe captain. As he rose in seniority, he gained a reputation amongst passengers and crew for quiet flamboyance. Some passengers would sail the Atlantic only in a ship he captained. He became known as the Millionaire's Captain, because England's upper class usually chose to sail on ships that he commanded. From 1904 on, Smith commanded the White Star Line's newest ships on their maiden voyages. In 1904, he was given command of the then largest ship in the world the Baltic. Her maiden voyage from Liverpool to New York, sailing June 29, 1904, went without incident. After three years with Baltic, Smith was given his second new big ship, the Adriatic. Once again, the maiden voyage went without incident. During his command of Adriatic, Smith received the Long Service Decoration for Officers of the Royal Naval Reserve along with a promotion to Commander. Olympic Class Command as one of the world's most experienced sea captains, Smith was called upon to take first command of the lead ship in a new class of ocean liners, the Olympic a Euro again, the largest vessel in the world at the time. The maiden voyage from Southampton to New York was successfully concluded on June 21, 1911, but as the ship was docking in New York Harbor, a small incident took place. Docking at Pier 59 under the command of Captain Smith with the assistance of a harbor pilot. Olympic was being assisted by 12 tugs when one got caught in the backwash of Olympic, spun around, collided with the bigger ship, and for a moment was trapped under Olympic's stern, finally managing to work free and limp to the docks. The Hawk incident, on September 20, 1911, Olympic's first major mishap occurred during a collision with a British warship, HMSA Hawk, in which the warship lost her prow. Although the collision left two of Olympic's compartments filled and one of her propeller shafts twisted, she was able to limp back to Southampton. At the resultant inquiry, 
the Royal Navy blamed Olympic, alleging that her massive size generated a suction that pulled Hawk into her side. Captain Smith had been on the bridge during the events. The Hawk incident was a financial disaster for White Star, and the out-of-service time for the big liner made matters worse. Olympic returned to Belfast and, to speed up the repairs, Harland and Wolfe was forced to delay Titanic's completion, in order to use one of her propeller shafts and other parts for Olympic. Back at sea in February 1912, Olympic lost a propeller blade as once again returned to her builder for emergency repairs. To get her back to service immediately, Harland and Wolfe again had to pull resources from Titanic, delaying her maiden voyage from March 20 to April 10. RMS Titanic Despite the past trouble, Smith was again appointed to be in command of the newest ship in the Olympic class when the RMS Titanic left Southampton for her maiden voyage. Although some sources state that he had decided to retire after completing Titanic's maiden voyage, an article in the Halifax Morning Chronicle on April 9, 1912 stated that Smith would remain in charge of Titanic until the company completed a larger and finer steamer. On April 10, 1912, Smith, wearing a bowler hat and a long overcoat, took a taxi from his home to Southampton Docks. He came aboard Titanic at 7 a.m. to prepare for the Board of Trade muster at 8 o'clock a.m. He immediately went to his cabin to get the sailing report from Chief Officer Henry Wilde. After departure at noon, the huge amount of water displaced by Titanic as she passed caused the laid-up New York to break from her moorings and swing towards Titanic. Quick action from Smith helped to avert a premature end to the maiden voyage. The first four days of the voyage passed without incident, but shortly after 11.40 p.m. on April 14 Smith was informed by First Officer William Murdoch that the ship had just collided with an iceberg. It was soon apparent that the ship was seriously damaged. Designer Thomas Andrews reported that five of her watertight compartments had been breached and that Titanic would sink in under two hours. During the evacuation, Captain Smith failed to manage and coordinate the evacuation effort, and gave ambiguous and impractical orders. Smith perished that night along with around 1,500 others, and his body was never recovered. At 2.10 a.m., ten minutes before the final sinking, Second Officer Charles Lightola saw Smith walking towards the bridge, before it was engulfed by the sea, there are conflicting accounts of Smith's final fate. Second Officer Charles Lightola last saw Smith walking across the bridge. Some survivors said Smith quietly wandered off towards the bridge at 2.10 a.m., ten minutes before the final sinking, locked himself inside the ship's wheelhouse and died clinging to the Scheiper Euro unregistered trademark S wheel when the wheelhouse windows broke due to the pressure. Robert Williams Daniel, a first-class passenger who jumped from the stern immediately before the ship sank, told the New York Herald in its April 19, 1912 edition how he had witnessed Captain Smith drown in the ship's wheelhouse. I saw Captain Smith on the bridge. My eyes seemingly clung to him. The deck from which I had leapt was immersed. The water had risen slowly, and was now to the floor of the bridge. Then it was to Captain Smith's waist. I saw him no more. He died a hero. These accounts are supported by Robert Ballard's book The Discovery of the Titanic, and some Titanic historians and has remained the iconic image which has remained of Smith. Later when working to free collapsible B, however, Junior Marconi officer Harold Bright reported seeing Smith dive into the sea from the starboard side of the bridge just as the water began flooding the open bridge, a story which was corroborated by first-class passenger Mrs. Eleanor Widener, who was in lifeboat number four at the time. It has been suggested that the man who Bright and Mrs. Widener saw jump from the bridge may have been 6th officer James Moody, who was seen jumping at this time, but it could seem unlikely that Bride, who knew both Moody and Smith, would have mistaken the officer's identity. Also second-class passenger William John Mellers and fireman Harry Sr., who both survived aboard Collapsible B, stated that Smith jumped from the bridge. Accounts of Smith carrying a child to a lifeboat after the sinking before swimming towards his sinking ship or freezing in the water are almost certainly apocryphal, according to historians featured in the A&E documentary Titanic, Death of a Dream. However, 
several survivor reports may suggest that Smith was actually able to swim over to Collapsible B before to die from hypothermia. Jack Thayer, a first-class passenger who survived aboard Collapsible B, late reported that a Euro or questions and answers were called around a Euro, who was on board, and who was lost, or what they had been seen doing. One call that came around was, a Euro O E is the chief aboard? A Euro whether they meant Mr. Wilde, the chief officer, or the chief engineer, or Captain Smith, one do not know. I do know that one of the circular life rings from the bridge was there when we got off in the morning. It may be that Captain Smith was on board with us for a while. Nobody knew where the A Euro O E chief A Euro was A Euro. Colonel Archibald Grassi reported that an unknown swimmer came near the capsized and overcrowded lifeboat, and that one of the men on board told him hold on to what you have, old boy. One more of you aboard would sink us all. In a powerful voice, the swimmer replied all right boys. Good luck and God bless you. Grassi did not see this man, nor was able to identify him, but some other survivors later claimed to have recognized this man as Smith. Another man never asked to come aboard the boat, but instead cheered its occupants saying a Euro OE good boys. Good lads. A Euro with a Euro OF voice of authority a Euro. One of the collapsible B survivors, Fireman Walter Hurst, tried to reach him with an oar, but by this time the man was floating dead. Hurst said he was certain this man was Smith. Captain Smith's fate will probably remain uncertain. There are also conflicting accounts of Smith's last words. Reports said that as the final plunge began, Smith shouted to his crew be British boys, be British. Although this is engraved on his memorial and portrayed in the 1996 TV miniseries, it was likely a myth made up by the British press at the time, as not one member of the surviving crew claimed he said anything like this. James McGann said that as water began to flood the bridge, Smith's last words were well boys, you've done your duty and done it well. I ask no more of you. I release you. You know the rule of the sea. It's every man for himself now, and God bless you. Legacy. A statue, sculpted by Kathleen Scott, wife of Antarctic explorer Robert Falcon Scott, was unveiled in July 1914 at the western end of the Museum Gardens in Beacon Park, Litchfield. The pedestal is made from Cornish granite and the figure is bronze. Litchfield was chosen as the location for the monument because Smith was a Staffordshire man and Litchfield was the centre of the diocese. The statue originally cost a £740 raised through local and national contributions. The plaque below his memorial statue states, In 2010, as part of the Parks for People programme, the statue was restored and the green patina removed from its surface at a cost of a £16,000. In 2011 an unsuccessful campaign was started to get the statue moved back to Captain Smith's hometown of Hanley. Smith had already been commemorated in Hanley's town hall with a plaque reading. This tablet is dedicated to the memory of Commander, Sig Edward John Smith Road, RNR. Born in Hanley, 27 January 1850, died at sea, April 15, 1912. Be British. Whilst in command of the White Star SS Titanic that great ship struck an iceberg in the Atlantic Ocean during the night and speedily sank with nearly all who were on board. Captain Smith having done all man could do for the safety of passengers and crew remained at his post on the sinking ship until the end. His last message to the crew was be British. The plaque was removed in 1961 given to a local school and then returned to the town hall but remounted in the interior of the building in 1978. Decorations As a member of the Royal Naval Reserve, Smith wore his two decorations when in uniform, the decoration for officers of the Royal Naval Reserve and the Transport Medal. A a reserve decoration, a a transport medal, family, Smythe a Euro unregistered trademark s half-sister Fitzer died in 1921 and his widow, Sarah Eleanor Smith, was hit and killed by a taxi in London in 1931. Their daughter, Helen Melville, married and gave birth to twins, Simon and Priscilla. Simon, a pilot in the Royal Air Force, was killed in World War II. Priscilla died from polio three years later. Neither of them had children. Helen died in 1973. 
portrayals. Otto Anik, Brian Ahern, Clarence Doant, Lawrence Naismith, Michael Rennie, Harry Andrews, Hugh Riley, George C. Scott, John Cunningham, Bernard Hill, Kenneth Belton, John Donovan, Alan Rothwell, Malcolm Tierney, David Calder, Bibliography, Titanic Captain, The Life of Edward John Smith, G. J. Cooper ISBN 978-0-7524-6072-7, The History Press Limited, 2011, References. External links, one of Stoke-on-Trent Museum's local heroes, Captain Smith on Titanic-Titanic.com, Captain Smith Biography.